Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video I'm going to continue covering uh, games from the Serbia Chess Open, played in Belgrade. So it was a really tough tournament and I played in the master section even though I wasn't supposed to rating wise but 10 or so players got accepted and I applied a while back so I, I got in luckily and it's usually for, for people 2100 and above. And in round 4 I faced a very strong international master uh, who surprised me in the opening. So I'd prepared for him for a long while, for about five or six hours, which is way more than I usually prepare because he, he plays some tricky variations. And when I played e4, he'd unexpectedly played the Aliekin. And I, well, I, I know what to do against this and I've played against this many times but I did not prepare it specifically for this game usually I like to find some specific ideas for for each game so I played what I play most of them uh, e5 knight d5 c4 knight to b6 and now d4 and we get the exchange after d6 e takes d6 and he took with the c pawn you can also take with the e pawn and this is a very thematic position for the exchange Eliakin. it's sort of like a Sicilian uh, a, a dragon setup from a Sicilian <coughs> because black plays uh, g6 bishop to g7 but this knight is on b6 which is way inferior to a knight on f6 so black doesn't have an easy game as or he doesn't have as many attacking ideas as he does in in the normal dragon okay so the next three or four moves are just mainline theory these are just the best moves and what white wants to do White wants to make sure there are no problems on this diagonal and black wants to castle quickly. So b3 everything is defended and black plays knight to c6. And I'm familiar with this position. And if you recall, I don't know if you've seen it, I played it uh, in a training game a few months ago. And in this exact position I, I said the same thing I'm going to say now. Uh, I know that d5 is the best move but I don't know why. And this is one of two positions which I keep, well, which I, I haven't studied them properly and I keep delaying that and I, since this game, I've changed that uh, finally. But during the game I was thinking, why am I so lazy? And okay, so d5 is the next, the best move and I knew this. I knew that d5, knight e5, uh, bishop to e2, f5, f4 uh, is theory and now I wasn't sure what black does but I, I was pretty sure black plays knight g4 and then I definitely had no idea whether I should play bishop d4 or uh, bishop takes g4. In either case I wasn't really happy with my position. This is what I was going to play and I had a, about a 15 minute think trying to decide whether to play d5 or not. In the end I did not play it because I wasn't sure what to do and the positions get extremely sharp. So I ended up playing bishop to e2, which I knew wasn't too bad for white. It almost allows black to equalize, but it doesn't lead to uh, lines that are as sharp as those after the early d5. We did however get a position that's even trickier, which is, well, I deserve that because I didn't know theory. So he played f5 normally as if d5 knight e5 bishop e2 were interposed uh, he just played f5 and I played f4. Okay and I played f4 knowing that he has to play e5 here. If he doesn't play e5 then I play d5 and the knight doesn't have the e5 square anymore so he has to break open the position. But I'd planned this before playing uh, bishop to e2 since I, I've analyzed the game and there are no games with this position in the database, this is new uh, and bishop e2 is inferior to d5, so, th so that's the reason why. So after, after e5 I have to take it d5, d5 and it's actually best to exchange queens, takes, takes. And now not taking on e5, which is something I'd originally intended, but during my calculation I found I, I, what I think is a good plan and I think it's a good plan. So I played knight h3. Uh, if f5, then knight e5, and after knight f3, knight d3. And I really wasn't happy with this position. Of course, I don't have king e2 because rook takes knight. So I would have to play something like bishop to d2, uh, to d which just doesn't look right. Fine, I have a 3 to 2 pawn majority on the queen side, but that really isn't going anywhere. And probably he can just play bishop to d4 at some point. 
force me, uh, excuse me, bishop to f8, bishop to c5, or if I move my knight bishop to d4 and just cramp my position even further. Uh, if I go knight f3 straight away, then he goes e4, and after knight to d2, he just goes knight b4, and there's a ton of pressure on my position. So knight h3. The idea behind knight h3 is I, I want to develop, I want to control g5, I want to jump into g5 if possible. If he ever takes on f4, I want to take with the knight, uh, and I'm not leaving myself open to a tempo with pawn e4. Okay, and there is only one sensible move uh, for my opponent, and that's knight to d4. I don't have to take this, everything is defended, uh, I can just castle. Okay, I'm giving up my light squared bishop, but I didn't think that was such a big problem because I have a pawn on c4 and he has all of his pawns on light squares, so this bishop is actually pretty bad. Uh, of course, if I play c5 and bishop c4, it becomes a very good bishop, but I don't, however, have the time to do that before he plays bishop to e6. So best case scenario, I'd have to trade it for this guy, but with a pawn on f5, I don't really want to do that. I'd much rather keep a knight and the option to go back to c3 and jump into d5. So he takes on e2, I took on e2, uh, and he played rook to d3, which I had anticipated, and I play king to f2. And I don't really mind bringing my king closer to the center, my king is actually good on f2. He plays h6, preventing knight g5, and I played rook c to d1. I can also play rook f to d1, the point is I think he has to trade, so, so yeah, a trade happens takes takes and in this position he could go wrong uh, i mean there are some tricks with uh rook d8 check there are some tricks with f takes e5 and bishop takes h6 so he has to be very careful if he doesn't do anything uh, uh let's say king f7 then f e5 bishop e5 bishop h6 and i'm probably just winning this position because i'm controlling these two squares and he's very underdeveloped, so for example, bishop e6, knight check, and that should spell disaster for, for black. But of course, he is an extremely strong player, so he plays the best move, knight to d7, defending e5. Okay, now uh, I was sort of struggling to find a plan. The only thing I could see is a good defensive plan, which I'm going to have to do whatever happens, I'm going to have to move my king away either to e1 or to f1, and then I'm going to have to play knight f2, because he's threatening to play knight f6, knight g4, or knight f6, knight e4. And that simply has to be prevented. If I allow that, then I'm probably just much worse or even losing. I played a4 first. I don't think he has time for knight f6, uh, because if I push my pawns forward, then he's going to have a very hard time saving these pawns later on in the game. Uh, so he plays b6. Fine. Uh, I played king f1, trying to meet knight f6 with knight f2, uh, and he played e4, which I was really happy to see, because this now gives up the d4 square. Now I have two squares for my knight, d5 and d4, and I just continued knight f2. And uh, the idea behind knight f2 is... To prevent knight g4 but also to play knight d1 knight c3 knight d5 so even though he has the bishop pair even though he has a passed pawn on e4 i was happy with my position because i think my knights are just as good as his bishops and also the pawn is sufficiently blockaded not really going anywhere uh, of course black should be better because of the bishop pair and because of the passed pawn but i i, I was happy Okay, he played king f7, uh, and I played rook to d2. Rook d2 may seem weird, but I want to play knight d1, and I don't have any other squares for, for my rook, so so that's that. Okay, bishop f8. And now for the biggest problem in my position, uh, he's going to play knight c5. When he plays knight c5, I'm going to have to take it. Uh, when I take it, he can take with the b pawn, and then I would have to keep my knight on c1 for the major majority of the game, because c3 is weak. If c3 falls a4 and c4 if b3 excuse me falls then a4 and c4 also fall okay i con continued knight d1 he went knight c5 and i took it and he surprised me he took with the bishop uh, as i said if he takes with the b pawn then for example knight dc3 rook b8 knight c1 this seems very passive uh, all he has to do is probably play bishop g7 get the bishop into d4 and he should be 
he should have a very pleasant position. I don't know if it's winning or not, because it's really hard to break through, but probably g5 and then taking, uh, and then trying to do something on the g-file, or if I take, of course, opening up the bishop should be great. But, but he took with the bishop, and now I think I'm just equal. Uh, again, my knights are just as good as his bishops, if, if not better. Knight d to c3. Okay, bishop e6, finally, and rook to d1. Uh, I want to unpin. Okay, so if I don't play rook d1 and move my other knight, then the spin is very annoying. And I, of course, I don't want to give up the d5. So rook to d1. Uh, he played g5. Uh, of course, I don't want to allow rook to g8 and rook g1 mate, so I never take. Uh, never, ever. If he ever takes, I take with the knight to make sure there's uh, a pawn still on g2 guarding against that. I played knight d5. Here he played a move that I honestly did not understand. I have no idea what that move does and what the idea behind it was. He played the rook to c8. Uh, I guess he wanted to prevent knight c2, but if I'm him, I don't really mind trading off this monster knight for this bishop on e6, which has no squares. Uh, so, yep, that, that was weird. And here, uh, I didn't see a very nice move. So, if you want, you can pause the video if, and find an amazing positional idea, which I, I did not even consider. I wasted the move. Uh, I played pawn to g3, which does nothing. It actually weakens the f3 square and that doesn't do anything. It was just a waiting move. I wanted to see what he does. And he played rook to d8. So also just, well, saying that rook c8 was a useless move. Instead of pawn to g3, there was an amazing idea playing pawn to g4. And if that pawn is taken, uh, fg4, that fg5, a g5, and you get a square on g3 for the knight, and this is tremendous. I mean, this pawn is ab about to drop, and I'm gonna get my pawn back. These two are weak, my knights are amazing, this is just a beautiful position. If he doesn't take, then I can trade and then again play knight uh, to g3 and put pressure on, on e4. But as I said, instead I played g3, which is really a nothing move. There's nothing to g3, I just wanted to see how he uh, continues this position. Because I don't really have many ideas. Uh, my pieces are fine. If I could get my king to e3, that would be great, but unfortunately he has a bishop on c5, so I don't really have a way to improve my king. Uh, my knights are really good where they are, my rook is optimal on d1. I don't want to push any of my pawns, maybe b4 in the future, but not yet. So g3 is a waiting move. Okay, rook d8. Knight d to c, oh, excuse me, knight d to c3. Uh, I don't want to allow, so if I play nothing, let's say this, then this is what I don't want to allow. I don't want to allow him to blockade this pawn with the king, or even worse, if I take with the rook and we trade, again, I don't want to allow him to blockade this pawn with the king and just crush me. In this case, this pawn is extremely dangerous. So I just retreated, I don't want to allow him to isolate my pawn. Uh, and here he blundered. After the game, he actually said this is a bad move. And I, I agree. Uh, the next move he plays actually leads to a simplification, which I, I'm not going to say why it is better after that, because the position was equal, practically speaking. But white is probably the one playing for the win. He played rook to d3, which seems nice, but it doesn't work tactically. Uh, I just take on d3, and after e takes d3, I play knight c1. This pawn is about to drop. Uh, there's absolutely nothing he can do. If he pushes the pawn, I can just do this, or even do this, so that I can meet bishop b4 with knight b4. Uh, so pushing the pawn doesn't work. Uh, he played bishop to d4, which I'd expected, and I just played knight d1. Again, this pawn isn't going anywhere. If he plays d2, then I go knight d3. Next move, king e2, and, and I take the pawn. Uh, so after knight to d1, he just played a6, giving up the pawn straight away, and knight takes d3. Okay, and his bishops are amazing, of course, but my knights are pretty good too. Uh, I'm not going to say white is better, but white is up a pawn. So he starts trading off pawns. He plays b5 take it he takes of course i don't want to take again losing the b 
three pawns, so I played knight to b2, and everything's defended. He played g4, uh, closing the position, king to g2, bc4. I could take with the pawn, not allowing bishop uh, to d5 check, but he can just trade out the bishop, bishop d2, bishop to c3, and my pawn is much better on b3 defending my knight, so I took with the knight. Bishop d5 check, king f1, uh, king e6, uh, I played knight d2 e5, he played bishop c5, I played knight d2, uh, bishop to e3, knight d to c4, and here he offered the draw, which I accepted. I don't really have a way to make progress, uh, he doesn't have a way to make progress either. Uh, if I ever move one of my knights, the other one either falls or I lose the b3 pawn, in which case his position probably is superior has way more space and his king is much better than mine also he can start opening this up with ideas of well, let's say hmm okay i'll just try to set something up okay let's say something like this happens uh and then okay let's not lose a pawn bah. okay let's let's say i, I lose this pawn I just want to show you what I mean. Okay, and if I take it, then he goes here. And and this is a lost king and pawn endgame if these are traded off. So I don't want to allow something like that to happen. So I don't really have a way to maneuver my knights around. If he ever moves his king towards here, then I probably just win all of his pawns and 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 win the game. So it's pretty much a stalemate position uh, for for both of us, a Tsuktwang position for both of us. So we agreed to a draw. And I mean, I'm not happy with how I played in the opening because I did not know the theory, or I knew what the theory was, but I didn't know how to play those positions. Uh, I made several mistakes in the middle game, but I think I played pretty well, and I'm happy I drew an international master. This is the first time I survived the game against an IM. Hopefully many more to come. So yeah, uh, this was round four. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, yeah, I hope you liked the game, hope you liked the video, and stay tuned for more chess. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.